I want to ask you both about some uh, very important topic that's uh, recently come to light. And of course, corporate media will not cover it, so we'll cover it here. Uh, it looks like uh, an excess of over $40 million, uh, maybe more, uh, from various Democratic Party establishment groups have been heavily funding uh, what you would call the Trump uh, you know, type candidates in the GOP uh, to help get them over the finish line. How this is not a bigger scandal um, is, is beyond me. Uh, I think this is just akin to the fact that all of the paranoia is sort of created um, in a vacuum to just try to you know, the more hysterical people are, the more they can just keep, at least in theory, keep them under control. But, you know, at some point you have to show your hand. And what you're recognizing is that we're at a time where the country is trying to change. And a lot of people who have benefited from the country being a certain way for a long time, they're really like throwing their body on the railroad track to try to prevent it from happening. Your case is a perfect example of that. But when you read stories like this, you realize that so much of the hysteria that they create is, is just a big fabrication. Our country doesn't have universal health care or living wage. We're at war constantly. You know, the planet's on fire. Uh, criminal justice is for profit. So is education. You know, the real problems that face us are things that usually unite most people. When we're faced with this prospect of, you know, the Trumps and the DeSantis's are going to take over. Yeah, well, you're helping that happen. You're you're encouraging that to happen with this idea that, well, we'll stay in power if we just put the crazies on the other side. I don't know, guys. I think that's a pretty uh, dangerous game to play. And I think it's uh, frankly abhorrent that they are doing it. But I can't say I'm surprised. Your thoughts. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. If you no, go to... ahead, please. Uh so I, I have not heard the news. So it's that $40 million are being spent to keep plus. Trump. Yeah, to keep Trump. Yeah, basically, Democratic Party groups are funding these Trump candidates to help them win their primary. So that's who the Democratic candidate has to face in the general election. <laughs> so you're being, saying that despite it's, it's, the fact that they're all still like wallowing over the Hillary Trump thing, they're yeah. still employing the Pied Piper strategy. That's 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 what you're saying is happening. Yeah. Oh, well, this is a this is another form of the Pied Piper strategy at a more local, micro level. Well, yeah, hundred mm -hmm. yeah. percent. It, it, yeah. It's it's really bad, right? Because some of the people that they've been boosting, like uh, Doug Mastriano in sure. Pennsylvania and Don Cox, who won who, in Maryland, in Maryland. Both of whom won their primaries, correct, uh, and received millions of dollars from the Democratic Party Governor Association. Um, I mean, these are people who are leaders in the whole Stop the Steal movement. These are people who were involved in January sixth. Uh, I mean, and, and and what they advocate for goes beyond that. The 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 uh, uh, in, the crazy uh, Christian nationalist misogynism. Both of those those two uh, embody. I mean, so it's just not that they're 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 crooked and they want to overturn elections and stage coups and things like that. But what they want to put into place is uh, just a, 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 a unbelievably. Uh, you know, it's Handmaid's Tale stuff. You know, I know we we all keep using that as an example, but, you know, it's getting cliche, but cliches are true for a reason. And these people, this is what they're, they're trying, they want to see happen. And it's all about control, right? It's all about having control over people, control over groups, control, you know, particularly over women, LGBTQIA, uh, people of color, whatever. It's about that control. And these are who the Democratic Party is boosting because they have this insane strategy. And it goes back exactly, Jen, to the Pied Piper strategy of 2016, that if we present the worst, if the Republicans present the worst candidate possible, then we will siphon off Republican voters from the center right because they won't go along with the crazies. Mm. And that's how, and then screw the left. We don't need them. They're going to vote for us regardless. Well, it, well, it, hey, they can either take the crumbs we're giving them or 
they can get the, what the Republicans offer. I mean, that's what the Democrats have been saying for decades now, right? Really ever since, uh, you know, at some point in the 80s. So, you know, you do, you have this where they're, they're pursuing this strategy that is just um, so reckless. You know, it's kind of, it reminds me of if people recall back, uh, Nixon and Kissinger had what's called the madman strategy, where we're going to scare the Soviets and the Chinese to death. You know, we're going to act out of control and reckless and crazy, and it's going to scare the Soviets and the Chinese to the negotiating tables because they don't know what we're going to do. And I mean, it, it's not the same thing, but it's like that type of reckless, um, really dangerous mindset that you're creating Frankenstein's monsters here that, you know, are uncontrollable. And certainly seeing what happened with Trump, what's occurred, and then the fact that Democrats are continuing to go with these policies of, yeah, putting millions of dollars into Republican primaries to make sure the worst and most dangerous, not the worst. It's not like these guys are, are just horrible people who just are, are going to be bumbling nincompoops, you know, who are going to be inept. No, these people are going to be very effective at what they want to do. And it's incredibly dangerous. And again, it goes, it, it, but it gets back to the whole idea of what we're talking about here, the, the overall corruption of the Democratic Party. They're not your friends. They will betray you in a heartbeat and they will do whatever is necessary to make sure they stay in power, even by doing something incredibly risky as making sure as people like Don Cox or Doug Mastriano uh, win their primaries. Which groups are doing this like out of just, you know, curiosity, Peter? Like who, who are, you know, funding these things? What groups are these? I'll have to look them up. Give me one second. Um, I'm just curious. It's, yeah, I know. I know with Cox, it was a Democratic Governors Association. So, you know, similar to yeah. the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee or, or the Democratic right. Senator. So they're, they're party arm. groups. They're party yeah. groups. They're yeah. not. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is this is a policy that people sat around at a table or on a Zoom call, you know, or whatever, and made this decision from official levels of the mm -hmm. DNC, you know, in one of their arms and one of their 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 their, right. their you know, organisms. And yeah, no, it is. I mean, this is this is what they choose to do after seeing how horrible that decision was for our country by right. helping to get Trump. Right. I mean, and the fact then that it wasn't like Trump. The, the thing that's so mind boggling here is it wasn't like Trump then didn't do well in 2020. He got the second most votes Ooh. ever. Right. Ooh. I mean, so it wasn't even like, OK, we, we got them to run this really terrible candidate. We lost because of the Electoral College and Susan Sarandon and everything else. Jill Stein. Um, but, and then in 2020. Yeah, Jill Stein. And then in 2020, what we really crushed them, though, like we destroyed the Republican Party. And that wasn't the case. You know, I mean, it was, you know, he got the second most votes. And now in 2022, the Republicans are going to take both the House and the Senate, most likely, you know, and if the, God knows the Democrats are going to do in 2024, if they run Biden or they run Harris or Buttigieg or anything else, oh. you're going to end up with another you're going to end up with a Ron DeSantis or a Trump or whoever. Well, that's okay. the, those are the only two possibilities. Trump or DeSantis from the GOP stuff. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Um, so it turns out that uh, Governor Pritzker, who is a potential candidate for president of the United States, I've heard him speak in person, um, and the Democratic Governors Association dropped 35 million alone on ads attempting to influence Illinois Republic, the Illinois Republican gubernatorial primary more than any office is believed that has ever spent to meddle in another party's primary. Well, Mr. Pritzker, good luck running for president with that on your ass. Ain't gonna work. Oof, man, that's messed up. That's yeah, that, I mean, the, the, this is the, the first I'm hearing of it, but my, my kind of uh, re immediate reaction is, uh, one, you're playing with fire, like Matt said. Uh, I don't know why anyone would look at what happened with Trump and say, uh, I'd like to try that again. Uh, <laughs> it, it, to, it, it's why not put all those resources and efforts to actually like Democrats that are really popular. I mean, there's this entire movement of like trust facts, trust science. And then, you know, you'll put up a poll that says Bernie is going to win uh, in the presidential. And they're like, no, 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 that's not true. Um, you know, it, it's like we see time and time again, Medicare for all, extremely popular, uh, making sure raising the minimum wage, extremely popular. But there's such a resistance to those sets of facts uh, or, or that type of science, you know, polling science. Uh, and so it, it's really frustrating is, is uh, instead of trying to impact me, what's happening on the Republican side, put forward people and platforms that are going to win you the election, no matter who the Republicans put up. Uh, and I think that's a, a better use of, you know, 
uh, the Democratic intelligentsia's uh, time instead of trying to find maybe the worst Republican. Uh, because uh, I think what we saw is that when people feel like there's really no good option, they'll take the option that's sometimes the most uh, uh, kind of uh, fanatical and, and that doesn't necessarily uh, help anyone. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 disturbing that that's that's the best plan and that's where they're putting millions of dollars uh, instead of electing really strong Democrats that have a lot of support from uh, people. Let's not forget they also spend money supporting people like Henry Cuellar. Yeah. Um, they they spend money within their own party on very, you know, disgusting kind of types of people as well. So they yeah. spread that kind of stuff equally amongst people that don't support our civil liberties. Absolutely. The incumbent I'm challenging is has given thousands of dollars to Henry Cuellar and Dan Lipinski, who is the other uh, uh, really conservative Democrat that was – unseated by Marie Newman. And so, uh, and nobody knows about this in the district because he's never been challenged for 24 years. And so right. we're making sure to elevate that part of his uh, history and make sure uh, people who care a lot about reproductive rights or the ACA know that that these are the candidates he supported. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, it's all connected. All of this is connected. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.